if I move just slightly north of dead center, the fan actually does pull a lot of the smoke away from the lens. Today I'll be taking a look at the KCTX 350E Trinocular Stereo Microscope. This scope was given to me by KC for review purposes. The microscope offers a magnification range from 7x to 50x. It's equipped with 10x23 eyepieces that offer an enhanced field of view by an additional 3 millimeters compared to the conventional 10x20 eyepieces commonly found in most popular microscopes within the same category. I also found them easier to line up due to the smaller lens opening at the top. It has a working distance of 10 centimeters out of the box, but is also compatible with my 0.5 Barlow lens, which I will be using in some parts of this video to increase that distance to 15 centimeters. The dimensions of the work floor itself are 14.7 by 9.6 inches. Before we get started on looking at the camera itself, I wanted to show you just a few basic things about the microscope. Uh, one, you've got three different mounting options, so you can put this right in the center the way it is now. You can also put it over to the left or to the right. Just pop out these little caps, uh, these little rubber stoppers, and you can insert the screws from the bottom here to either of those three positions, doesn't matter which one. Um, I chose to go in the center because that seems to make the most sense to me. Also, I've opened up quite a bit of space back here because I don't have my boom stand set up anymore, so that's kind of convenient for me. And one thing that I really like about this microscope is the portability. If you want to pick this thing up and move it across the room or maybe across town to another shop to do some more work or something like that, you can literally just pick this thing up with one hand. We have two interchangeable plugs here. One of them goes for the ring light, which is included with the microscope. So we just plug this in here, and I'll probably put it over the back here so that it's out of the way. And then you can adjust the brightness right here, up and down. There's a, um, there's a dial here, and you can position this wherever you want. I like to have this cord behind it so it's out of the way of my soldering iron, because uh, once in a while that becomes a problem if you're not careful. And we'll take this other uh, plug right here and just connect it to the fan and you'll hear that the fan turns on, starts pulling the fumes away from what your area where you're working, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that unplugged for now because we don't need to listen to it. And down here on the bottom, there is a cap that's actually got a plastic cover on it that will protect your lens from things that tend to get up inside of the microscope while you're soldering, so that's helpful as well. Over here on the back, you can just loosen up this little clamp right here and that will allow you to rotate the microscope around. Well I have it turned over here I want to show you you can also adjust the distance between these two eyepieces. Now the IPD or interpupillary distance for everyone is is going to be a little bit different in most cases so all you have to do is pull these apart or push them back together and you want to make sure you have that lined up with each pupil otherwise you're going to see big black circles around the outside and that makes it hard to focus. Now once you have that adjusted properly and you've tuned in your main focus, which is right back here. You've got your zoom right here, and then you can individually focus either one of these eyepieces. So if you have a slightly different um, vision, or if you have a different prescription for your glasses, one eye to the other, it's easy to compensate for that right here and make everything get nice and focused. Depending on what type of microscope camera you have, it may be necessary to change out the hardware here on the top. So I'm just going to move this around so you can see the other side. Go ahead and unplug this for the moment. So up here on the top we've got a little tiny screw hex fitting. I think it's close enough to an H20. It might need something a little bigger but mine actually worked with that. That's how I got it out. We'll just twist that and this whole thing go a little bit further there. So the inside part will come out and this is the one that I need to use with my scope. We'll put that inside and just tighten that a little bit. And that's it. So now we are ready to install the camera. In the past, what I've ended up with when it comes to these trinocular setups is that what I see here through the eyepiece does not match up with what the camera sees. And that makes it very difficult to record videos because you're usually working with the focus point of what your what the project is like way over to one side or over in the corner here. So it makes it really tough. In order to, to allow your viewers to see what's going on, you have to kind of work at one you know extreme edge of the of the um, eyepiece. And with this microscope, I don't know how they did it, but they actually matched this up. And I had called 
microscope manufacturers in the past and they said, yeah, you know, that's, that's just how it is. You know, you, you, there's no way to get these two things to match up. But I'm going to show you something right now, which again, I think is one of the coolest features about this product. Right now on my platform here, I've got an iPhone 12 Pro Max motherboard, which you can't see. Let's see if we can get this over here. Okay. So I've got a motherboard right here from an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and I'm looking at the CPU. I've got the Apple lined up dead center here. So if I look at this right here, I see an Apple right in the middle of where I'm looking. Now, typically, if I were working on my microscope with the same camera, by the way, um, I would be at the far lower left hand edge right about eight o'clock position when it comes to the camera and again this makes it difficult to make videos because you keep forgetting that you need to keep everything shoved way over to the edge but check this out again apple dead center here i'm going to switch it over to the camera and now you can see i have almost an identical view on the camera compared to what i'm looking at through the eyepieces this is really exciting for me because I make a lot of micro soldering videos and it's always a struggle to just remember to do things right. A lot of times you have to do it twice. In this case, that problem has gone away and I can even zoom out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull back a little bit so we have a wider range of view and I'm gonna switch back to the microscope. And again, everything is lined up almost perfectly from here to here. Why no one else has been able to do that up till this point, I don't understand, but for that reason alone, I am sold on using this in order to create micro soldering tutorial video videos in the future. Now there's actually one other really cool feature I wanna show you and this may blow your mind. I'm going to take this head that's got everything working with the camera the way that I want it to and transplant it over to my old boom stand. They are 100% compatible. So check this out. I have just removed the head camera, ring light, transferred it from the original stand, and now I've got it sitting on a boom. Now the only catch here is that you cannot install the fan if you follow that procedure. However, there's even one more uh, compatibility feature that I think is really cool about this. What we're gonna do is, uh, you can see I've already removed the head from the stand, and on this scope anyways, there's a screw down here. We can just remove this completely, take this off, and now our new microscope piece will fit right here. Screw this back on. And now we are back to using a boom stand. We can also install the fan. I'm gonna push this back before we run out of room. Put the head back on. Let's get our camera installed. Ring light. plug this in and we have gone from a platform microscope to a boom stand using my existing microscope and most importantly now we have our fan so this this top piece here is pretty much compatible with everything that I, that I was already using with the boom stand. I love the versatility of this and the fact that everything lines up on the camera compared to what you're seeing through the eyepieces, really liking this microscope.